Today, we celebrate Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church and the whole world. And we rejoice in this gift of the third person of the Most Holy Trinity. We know there's only one God, but three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God is love. The Father is the lover, Jesus is the beloved, and the Holy Spirit is the love between them. And a great definition of the Holy Spirit is found in sacred scripture, the letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verse 5. Easy to remember, 5-5. Five, five. The Holy Spirit is the love of God poured out into our hearts. The love of God, who is love, poured into our hearts so we can love others the way that Jesus loves us, which is to lay down our lives, to die to our egos. We need the Holy Spirit to die to our egos so we can live a greater way of life, fulfilling the plan of God born of perfect wisdom and perfect love. Wow. Today, indeed, is a great celebration as we enter into the third glorious mystery of the Most Holy Rosary. We remember that Jesus ascended into heaven after completing his mission, and he went to prepare a place for us, and he promised to send us the third person of the Most Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And today that promise is fulfilled. We've been in the upper room with the Blessed Virgin Mary and the apostles and disciples praying for the Holy Spirit to come. And today he comes and he makes all things new. Fifty days after Jesus resurrected from the dead at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to allow the church to be able to proclaim the truth in love that Jesus is Lord and God is our Father and that mankind has been redeemed if he accepts the gift of Jesus' saving action and is baptized in water and the Spirit, St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 5. Our supernatural life begins at baptism. We need to get the whole world baptized in the Catholic Church. The Holy Spirit came on the Catholic Church, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and today is the birthday of the church. Remember, the church was conceived just like a baby needs to be conceived, and then the baby eventually, nine months later, has a birth. The church was conceived on Calvary when Jesus, the new Adam, Jesus is the new Adam, his side was pierced with a sword. And at the foot of the cross was Mary, the new Eve. So there's the new Adam and the new Eve. And with this blood and water that flowed out from the heart of Jesus is the new creation. In the power of the sacraments that were entrusted to the church. And we've received the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit who will lead us into all truth. Well, who is the truth? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. He's not just a way. He's not just a truth. He's not just a life. He is the way, the truth, the life. He's the only way to the Father. There's no other name in heaven, on earth, or under the earth by which we can be saved because to be saved means to participate in the life of God and to participate in the resurrection. And to do that, you need to live in the one who was resurrected, who resurrected himself, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can say, Jesus Christ is Lord, and God is our Father. Praise be the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the way, the only way to the Father. He's the way to truth. He's the truth that sets us free. And here is the greatest truth. God is love. And we're created in the image and likeness of God. Why? To be with God for all eternity. To know, love, and serve God and be happy with him forever. That's why we're created. That's the truth that sets you free. Why are you created? You ought to know that because that gives you a compass for your life. I'm created to know God. Well, how can I know God? Well, Jesus Christ revealed him, but the Holy Spirit reveals him and allows us to understand the revelation. To know God. And then once you know God, you're going to love him because he's pure love. And you're going to want to serve him because you... you, You've been born to fulfill a great mission, to share the truth in love with the whole world, that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, three persons whose love, who wants to be with everybody, who wants the whole world to get baptized, who wants the whole world to live in a state of grace, because grace is a participation in the life of God. By grace, we little humans can participate in the life of God. This is the truth. The truth is God loves us infinitely and he wants to be our friends. God wants to be our friend, the greatest friend ever, who's going to lead you to freedom in the truth, to lead you to life in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the life. This life begins at baptism. Our supernatural life, that is. And at baptism, you receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit infuses into you faith, hope, and charity. And we need to live radical faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Radical hope that we'll be with God for all eternity and proclaim that hope to the whole world that it's possible for them if they accept the truth that Jesus Christ revealed in the power of the Holy Spirit in the Holy Spirit himself as revealed and understood by the authentic teaching of the Catholic Church. This life begins at baptism, but it becomes more abundant at confirmation. In confirmation, we have an abundant life, life in the Spirit, where now our virtues, such as faith, hope, charity, and all the other virtues, humility, obedience, kindness, purity, everything that's good, all virtue, is perfected by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in the Holy Spirit, we receive seven gifts. Seven gifts. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord. And each of these gifts perfects virtues. For example, wisdom, wisdom perfects charity because you're going to see things from God's perspective. And God's perspective is love because he's love. And so you're going to have a higher view of things and you're going to see everything in life as an opportunity to love. Don't get caught up in the person or the circumstance. Just love. Desire the highest and best good for everyone, and the Holy Spirit will help you live that way. Understanding, understanding lifts your faith to a higher level, and so you're you're walking by faith, not by sight. And you're understanding that God's in control of everything. And everything that happens, God either wills or permits Everything that happens, God wills or permits. And everything God wills or permits is for his glory and our good. Praise be to God. So you're looking for what God is doing in every circumstance in life. You're not controlled by the circumstances and people around you. Rather, you're sent to bring God's light to the situation, the light of faith. The gift of counsel 
perfects the virtue of prudence. Prudence is basically doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. Doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. We have four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. The Holy Spirit strengthens these gifts, but counsel is such a great gift. The Holy Spirit counsels us. He's our counselor. Do you ever stop and ask the Holy Spirit, please give me counsel in this situation? Holy Spirit, counsel me. How can I best please God? How can I become a saint? How can I fulfill God's will in this circumstance? How can I bring the light of Christ to this circumstance? What a great counselor. Fortitude, the gift of fortitude. We need strength. We need courage. Fortitude perfects the virtue of courage and fortitude. And it gives us the strength to testify to the truth in season, out of season, convenient or inconvenient, so that all may be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. The world needs truth proclaimed to it, that God is love, that life is sacred from conception to natural death, that marriage is between one man and one woman and it's permanent, that, that God is good and he's working in everyone's life, that we're supposed to have peace, not war. That every human life is sacred and dignified. That all people are called into the Catholic Church, the true church that Jesus established. So many other beautiful truths. We need courage to proclaim that in this day and age that challenges, that even contradicts and rebels against the teachings and the commandments of God. We need courage. So we have wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge. Knowledge that everything we see in this world is passing away. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Do you enter into the word of God? Do you pray the word of God in the rosary? Are you living the word of God? Because that won't pass away. Everything you see will be passing away. Everything else is temporary. So don't get caught up into it. Just bring God's love, that knowledge, that knowledge that perfects our hope. Knowledge perfects the virtue of hope. Hope is to desire heaven above all things, relying on the promises of Christ and the help of the Holy Spirit. Keep hope alive. Proclaim hope to the world. Piety is basically prayer. We worship God. We're supposed to come to Mass every Sunday and Holy Day of Obligation because we owe it to God to worship Him. He's God and He created us in love and we belong to Him. He laid down His life on the cross for us. He sends us the Holy Spirit. We come together as a family to worship. And piety perfects the virtue of justice. Justice is giving the other their due. We owe God worship. We owe others their dignity and their reputation. We owe them love. We need to see the goodness in others. And we actually have to have, to have to justice with ourselves, knowing that we belong to God. We don't belong to ourselves. And fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord perfects temperance, moderation in everything. We need moderation in everything. Really, modesty is a very important virtue in this world today. People need to dress modestly. They need to speak modestly. They need to conduct themselves modestly like the Blessed Virgin Mary. Modesty is so beautiful. But to be temperate, sometimes you hear about people losing their temper. What does it mean when you lose your temper? It means you lost your temperance, the virtue of temperance. That's what it means. I lost my temperance. In the situation, have I been temperate? The Holy Spirit will help you have that moderation, that temperance with the gift of fear of the Lord, which means to keep God first and above all things. And so, there's so much more I can share with you. I mean, we're speaking about the third person of the Trinity. <laughs> and we basically have Pentecost to talk about him. Next week, we'll be talking about the Most Holy Trinity, which we'll talk about the the Holy Spirit again, 
But you need to go deep into the Holy Spirit. You meet Him in sacred scripture. You meet Him in the tradition of the church, the sacred tradition. You meet Him in the teachings of the church, the magisterium of the church. You meet Him in the liturgy of the church. You meet Him in prayer. You meet Him in apostolic and missionary life. You meet Him in the witness of the saints by which the Holy Spirit manifests His holiness and continues the work of salvation. To be holy, you need a relationship with the Holy Spirit. To live a spiritual life, you need a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's right in His name, Holy Spirit. You want to be holy? You need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You want to live a spiritual life? You need a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to have these great fruits in your love. I say your love because your life is to be consumed in love. And the fruits of the Holy Spirit we heard about in the second reading. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, modesty, chastity, and generosity. Are those the fruits in your life? Examine that. If not, ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, the spouse of the Holy Spirit. We say she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit came upon her at the first joyful mystery of the rosary, the Annunciation, where then Jesus came from heaven, the Word of God came into her, into her womb and conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Mary is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is active at the... Mass, where we call down the Holy Spirit on the offering of our gifts. But today at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes in fire, in tongues of fire, so that we have this zeal within us to go proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ suffered, died, was buried, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven and prepared a place for us, for those who accept the gift of life that he won for us. So Jesus is life, abundant life, eternal life. Life began at baptism, real life. We need to get everybody baptized. You don't have real life unless you're baptized. Abundant life is confirmation and eternal life. Jesus taught in St. John's Gospel, chapter 6. The Gospels are, and all of Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. But those who eat my body and drink my blood, the most holy Eucharist, they have eternal life. If you live in that grace that comes from your baptism, strengthened by confirmation in the Holy Spirit, living the Eucharistic life, remaining in a state of grace, remember you can only receive the Eucharist if you're in a state of grace, but if not, come to confession Come to penance, receive absolution, get in a state of grace, and please die in a state of grace. We conclude by asking the Holy Spirit to come and renew our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our souls, our relationships, to renew the face of the earth, to renew the church. As we pray together in our hearts, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Holy Spirit, teach me to know you, to want you, to love you, and to second your action in my soul. May you be the impulse of love that urges me to do God's holy will, guides us to the glorification of the Most Holy Trinity, and brings us to God. May the Holy Spirit be the wind in our sails to help us cross the ocean of this life and arrive at the promised land, life in God for all eternity, for those who live the Catholic faith faithfully. May you listen to the Apostles' Creed that we're going to profess shortly. In it, we will mention the Holy Spirit twice. The action of the Holy Spirit is to bring forth Christ in us and then for us to go forth and help be instruments of bringing forth Christ in the lives of others. May God bless you, and may the Holy Spirit guide your lives at all times. We ask this to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia.